As a data scientist, I can't help being enticed by complex machine learning techniques. There's something very satisfying about squeezing an extra 1% accuracy with a deep neural network that requires the power of a small village to train. However, this often leaves the thinking to the computer and us with a poor understanding of our models. So let's get back to basics. Hi, I'm Connor and welcome to ADO. This video is an advocacy for linear models. Its goal is to convince you that they should always be your first choice, especially if you care about interpretability. This is because they are easier to explain, widely understood and accepted in many industries. Building them also requires you to think more critically about your problem and data. Most importantly, a well-structured linear model will often match the performance of more complex models. Now, that last one may be a bold statement. It does take some hard work to make it true. We will see how by comparing the ability of logistic regression and a deep neural network to model a non-linear decision boundary. We will see that even though logistic regression is a linear model, we can use feature engineering to model non-linear relationships. We won't go over the code to do this, but you can find a link to it in the description. If you're interested in this type of content, then make sure to sign up to my newsletter in the description. You'll get free access to an explainable AI course, where I give an introduction to XAI, teach you to build interpretable models, and go into depth on the theory and Python code for model agnostic methods, including LIME, SHAP, PDPs, ICE plots, ALEs, and Friedman's H statistic. We'll start with what we mean by a non-linear decision boundary. Take a look at the scatter plot of promotion outcomes for 2000 employees. On the Y axis, we have the employee's performance for the previous year. On the X axis, we have the employee's age. The points for promoted employees are red and those not promoted are blue. Clearly, there's a relationship between the promotion outcome and employee's age and performance score, but it would not be possible to draw a straight line that separates those who were promoted from those who were not. In other words, promotion has a non-linear relationship with the two features. We have a non-linear decision boundary. Now, not promoted consists of all the employees who were fired, quit, or stayed, but didn't receive a promotion. So in understanding this relationship, consider that we have three groups. The first is the group with a performance below zero. Due to poor performance, these employees did not get promoted or were fired. The company actually wants to promote all high performing employees, yet young, hardworking and ambitious employees tend to leave for better offers. In comparison, as employees get older, they become more comfortable in their current positions. Whatever the reason, it is clear that the non-linear decision boundary is a result of an interaction between performance and age. That is, the relationship between the promotion decision and performance depends on the employee's age or vice versa. We'll define the concept of an interaction more thoroughly in a later video. For now, let's see how logistic regression does in modeling one. Let's say we did not put in the work above to understand our data. Instead, we split our 2000 employees into a training and evaluation set using a 70-30 split. Then we use the training set to build a logistic regression model with performance and age as the only features. Yeah, you can see a summary of this model. It had an accuracy of 82% on the evaluation set. Not bad. However, consider that most of the employees did not get a promotion. If we always make this prediction, we would get an accuracy of 77%. We can get a better understanding of what's happening by visualizing the decision boundary of this regression model. It is created by plotting the model's prediction for every age performance pair across the entire feature space. The pink area and blue areas are where the model predicts a promotion probability of above or below 50% respectively. If you look at the code, you'll see that this process treats the model as a black box. We could also achieve similar results by using the model's parameters and plotting the decision boundary directly. Looking at the decision boundary, 
we can see that the model is doing a terrible job. Around half the promotion predictions are not true promotions, that is poor precision. It also misses most of the promoted employees, poor recall. The problem is that the model's decision boundary is a straight line. This demonstrates that logistic regression is a linear classifier. It can only construct a decision boundary that is a linear function of the features you give it. Instead of trying to fix the regression model, let's take a more forceful approach. Using the same train evaluation split, we build a neural network. There are two hidden layers with 20 and 15 nodes respectively. Both hidden layers have ReLU activation functions and the output layer has a sigmoid activation function. To train the model, we use a batch size of 10 and 100 epochs. In the end, the model achieved an accuracy of 96% on the evaluation set. Looking at the model's decision boundary, we can see why it is considered a non-linear classification algorithm. Even though we only gave the model age and performance, it was still able to construct a non-linear decision boundary. So, to a certain extent, the model has done the hard work for us. We would likely get even better results with some automated hyperparameter tuning. Yet, this requires no critical thinking on our part. Instead, suppose we decide to put some more effort into the logistic regression model. We could have done some data exploration or, God forbid, spoken to the HR department. Through their experience, we may have discovered the interaction between performance and age. This is valuable information that can inform our feature engineering. In a later video, we'll discuss a few ways to incorporate interactions in a linear model. For now, we add a new feature to our data set, which is the ratio of an employee's age to performance. We follow the same modeling process as before, and you can see a summary of this new model. Notice, we now have three features. In the end, this model achieved an accuracy of 99%. Looking at the summary, we can see that all three features have a positive coefficient. As age and performance increase, the employee is more likely to get promoted. Yet, the ratio must also be large for a promotion to be likely. In other words, the employee's age must be high relative to their performance. These relationships are all consistent with what we have discussed and saw in the first scatter plot. They will hopefully also be consistent with HR's intuition. The third feature is still a function of age and performance. This means we can visualize the model's decision boundary in the same way as before. We can see that by adding the additional feature, logistic regression can model a nonlinear decision boundary. To be technical, this is a nonlinear function of age and performance, but it is still a linear function of all three features. So what we have done is reformulate a nonlinear problem as a linear one. This is exactly the goal of feature engineering for linear models. In general, feature engineering aims to reduce the complexity of your data and make the relationships with the target variable more obvious. We saw, to a certain extent, that neural networks did this for us. So why even bother with the work required to build a good linear model? The key benefit is how we interpret the logistic regression model above. We simply looked at the coefficients to understand how it makes predictions. Interpreting the neural network would require model agnostic methods. These all have their own limitations that introduce uncertainty around how models are truly making predictions. We should also consider that you may have to explain the algorithm itself used to train a model. In many industries, regression is already understood. If not, it would still be far easier to explain than a neural network. Now, if you do wanna use nonlinear models like neural networks or XGBoost, then you will have to use explainable AI methods to interpret them. This video gives an introduction to the field. Or check out this playlist for loads on one method in particular, SHAP. And remember, you can get my XAI course for free.